Greetings everyone, this is your host Anya, and I'm back after a little break and happy to put out something into the world, no matter how small. So today we'll be diving into a walkthrough for a Vulnhub hosted boot to root Linux machine called Cybersploit1. For those who are not familiar with Vulnhub, uh, Vulnhub hosts some really awesome vulnerable machines for pen testing purposes. Um, now, remember, with Vulnhub, you will need to go to the box you're working on, like Cybersploit 1, and download an OVA file, and then set that up with VMware or VirtualBox, depending on your preference. You'll also need to set up a DHCP server. I am shooting a companion video that should be out pretty soon that will go over how to set up that DHCP server. But without further ado, let's just get to the solutions for Cybersploit 1. All right, since this uh, is a Vulnhub box, we will need to scan our network with NetDiscover. Uh, so I'm going to run this netdiscover command uh, scanning my network, which is 10.10.10.0 .10 on the 24-bit subnet. And this subnet covers 254 IP addresses, so we have quite a lot to scan. But this network scanning tool, netdiscover, will listen to ARP requests and also uh, lists all active devices on the network, which will allow us to find the IP address that is assigned to the Cybersploit 1 VM. So let's give this a minute to run and we'll return to the scan. Okay, and now we're finally getting some results from our NetDiscover scan and you'll see here 10.10.1 is always uh, the box we're going to be running from and you can increment that from 10.10.10.0 uh, so 10.10.10.7 is what we'll first look at in our nmap scan which will be the next step um, so let's just exit out of this and start an nmap scan personally with nmap scans uh i will like to do the uh service version and uh, personally, I like to increase the verbosity. And once we enter this, our nmap command will specify port, uh, sorry, IP address 10.10.10.7 and scan. So we have some initial results. And the scan is complete. So let's take a look. We see uh, that port 22 is open, which is SSH, and we have some host key, typical stuff. We also have an, uh, an Apache web server hosted on port 80. So let's just go ahead and uh, flip over to a browser. And we're going to enter the 10.10.10.7 IP into the browser. And here we go. Welcome to Cybersploit CTF. Well, if you go through this pretty limited web page, you'll see all the links are dead. Uh, they just default back to this home page. So let's do a little bit more digging and first look at uh, the page source. All right, not much till the end here where we see, LOL, ha 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 ha, you should try something more. And down here at the bottom in green text, we do have a username, it's SKV. So go ahead and copy that and keep it for a bit later. Um, you can put it in a notepad function or if you're like me, just toss it and copy and paste into VI or Nano. 
Right, now after the nmap scan and taking a look at the web browser, let's go ahead and fuzz some additional directories using GoBuster, or alternatively you can use Durbuster, or whatever your preferred uh, fuzzing tool is. So we have the GoBuster uh, with the directory specified as http colon slash last 10.10.10.10.7 and then we have the word list we want to use, which I'm going to keep it as common.txt. All right, so there goes the fuzzing. You can see there are a few pages that we actually can access. Remember, 403 will be 403 forbidden access, but these 200, we can access these directories, including index, index.html. Let's take a look at robots dot txt in the web browser so we will just return um, to the home page and enter the directory hmm well that's interesting that sure does look like an encoded string so you can go ahead and run this through cyber chef or another program uh our i know that this is a base 64 and we're going to just translate this through the command line clean that up a bit and so we'll echo that string and yeah indeed we will decode b64 and you have here our first flag good work flag one and we have Cybersploit with a YouTube address here in curly brackets. Why not take a look at the YouTube first? Um, we can just scroll through the video so you can get an idea. Go ahead and subscribe to Cybersploit. It was great to create this uh, box for us. And you'll see some interesting stuff about Java uh, interviews and um, other interview uh, questionnaires and all goods of stuff all great stuff again would recommend the follow but for our intensive purposes of solving cybersploit the YouTube's going to be a dead end it's a rabbit hole so don't don't fall down too much of it unless you just want to watch cybersploits content which is understandable so uh, from here let's move on now that we've uh, gotten our first flag, let's move on. And now we'll come into play this username that we found uh, back on this page source. So it's SKV. We know port 22 is open on the cybersploit box. So let's just SSH as it's SKV at 10.10.10.7. And when it prompts you the, for the password, it is actually this entire flag. So go ahead and copy and paste that into the password field. Okay, and after we actually successfully copy and paste that into the field, you'll see we have a shell as its KV. So let's look around a little. Let's ls and see what we have here. And boom, you can see there's a flag to. So let's go ahead and cat flag to.txt out. Hmm. And we have binary. Okay, so we're going to have to decode to binary and translate it from binary to text. We're going to need to copy this and then go ahead and paste it in a binary to text translator. You may be able to do this with CyberChef, though I've not tried as of yet. Okay, and for this I am going to use binary to text.net and enter in the binary value. Now we'll just hit binary to text and we see the conversion says flag to colon cybersploit https 
uh, colon t dot main cyber exploit. So this is a shortened URL, and actually let's go to the HTTPS colon. Um, let's just open this link here. And again, we have some more social media from Cybersploit, this time Telegram. Again, like the YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe um, as this person made this box possible for us. So go ahead and subscribe. But like the YouTube, it will be a rabbit hole if you're looking for any additional clues relating to the Cybersploit box. And just go ahead and note down that as flag two, and we will continue. All right, now that we have the second flag, let's poke around a little bit more as the it's SKV user. Let's try a little priv escalation, uh, privilege escalation and do pseudo attack L. And remember to go ahead and grab this password, which is also the first flag that we received. Let's go ahead and copy, paste that, and you'll receive this output. Sorry, user, it's SKV, may not run sudo on Cybersploit CTF. So we will do a little additional poking around and take a look at the kernel. And we see we have this 3.13.0-32- generic kernel. Well, if we flip over to our local box, Go ahead and maximize this. It's viewable. We'll do a search exploit uh, scan, and it'll be for that 3.13.0. We'll just leave it there. Okay. And we do find some exploits here. One uh, that is an Ubuntu overlay FS local privilege escalation issue that corresponds to that kernel ID. All right, so let's actually move over to exploit database and look a bit more into this particular kernel vulnerability. Okay, so as you see, I have actually pulled up the Linux kernel um, 3.0. 13.0 to 3.19 uh, exploit in exploit a database. So we do see that it matches up with the search exploit information and it is an overlay FS local privilege escalation. And you can see as you go down, you can look at the CVE, download the exploit, which is 37292.c, an exploit written in C. We'll get there in a minute. And uh, we learn a little bit more about this exploit and how we can run it and then gain root access. So a little bit of uh, information about this exploit. The OFS.C exploit takes advantage of a permission flaw on the overlay FS file system and it allows an unprivileged user to create a shared library that's uh, malicious and that eventually allows them to gain root. Uh, so the exploit again is written in C and is compiled with GCC before it's run. So let's go ahead and run the actual exploit. Well, before we actually uh, compile and run 37292.c exploit. We'll want to download or transfer it over to the remote box that its SKV is logged into. So on our attacker machine, uh, let's just do an if config and make sure that we have the right um, IP addresses. And then after that, we're going to start a simple server. actually what to do and let's try this on port 8080 and you need to remember to run this to, in the directory that the 37292c um, script was downloaded into now I had previously downloaded this from exploit DB to my home directory which is where I'm running the simple server. So let's go back to the its SKV, uh, the remote server, and we're going to do wget htp 
and we'll we'll grab my if config again 10.10.10.11 and that's 8080 and we want to transfer the file 37292c and boom, there we go. That was transferred successfully. And now we can move to the portion where we actually compile and run our exploit. And now is time to compile. So we're going to compile this exploit with GCC. And we'll use 37292.c. And you can name the output anything. I'm just going to do exploit. Make it real obvious. <laughs> Okay, and now uh, you see the exploit has executable permissions, so let's go ahead and run the exploit. You can see it spawns the thread and it starts mounting the overlay FS file system, and there's the malicious shared library that was injected, which in turn it gives us root. So let's take a look and verify. Who am I? Root. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Let's just go over to the root directory. And we have a final flag. Let's cap that out. And, ooh, cybersploit flag three. And we have cybersploit, uh, series of numbers and curly brackets, and many, many congratulations. If you like it, uh, if you like it, share with me. And we have cybersploit's Twitter. So go ahead and check out, in addition to the YouTube and the Telegram, the Twitter for cybersploit1. That wraps up our walkthrough of Cybersploit 1, hosted by Volnhub. This is a fantastic beginner boot root Linux-based uh, machine that is perfect for those just starting out with CTFs and on their Linux journey even. Uh, so personally, I would recommend that to sharpen your skills or if you're just getting into CTFs or getting back into CTFs, this is a great box, real simple, goes through the basics of reconnaissance, privilege escalation, and then compiling the exploit. Uh, as for me, I'll be back with more content soon. I am planning to returning to uh, more consistent uploads on Friday afternoons, Eastern Standard Time. And I have a lot of exciting projects in the work I'm really excited to share with everyone. But for now, if you could make sure to do all the things, hit the bell, the subscribe button, all that jazz to stay updated on my upcoming walkthroughs and projects. Until next time, Good afternoon, good evening, and good night, my friends. This is your host, Anya, and as always, wherever you are in the world, happy hacking.